what is philosophy is a very relevant question we actually know what is philosophy though there is huge misconception about philosophy as a student of philosophy uh, i wish to clarify what is meant by philosophy once upon a time philosophy was meant for any kind of knowledge uh, from physics to uh, chemistry from literature to astronomy everything was considered as philosophy but now philosophy is a distinct discipline you know philosophy uh, persons uh, you know develop uh, theories and you know uh, some concepts when they fully agree in some matters then uh, that agreement gives rise to a new discipline and this very way most recently psychology has gone out of philosophy now philosophy is one of the departments in public uh, universities basically so philosophy is now um, is a distinct discipline philosophy uh, definition uh, is very ambiguous something mm, there are so many definitions of philosophy but it is philosophically impossible to give a definition of philosophy because in uh, definition we know that there is a part by which we give the definition and there is the matter of which we give the definition the uh, things or matters or you know aspects uh, that we are supposed to use to give a definition of philosophy is itself a matter of philosophy or a philosophical discussion or a debate so th there must be a circularity or you know uh, uh, begging the question philosophy uh, or you can say that there must be a paradox in any attempt to give a definition of philosophy. Uh, so, in my own way, I give a practical definition of philosophy, which is a very, you know, weak and wrong way to define philosophy. But it's, it's funny. Um, you can say that uh, philosophy is what the philosophers do when they do philosophy. Anyway, um, there are some specific characteristics by which we can identify something as philosophy. Philosophical uh, anything, philosophical discussion, philosophy must engage with big question, fundamental question or basic issue. The second thing uh, then that is most important for philosophy is the openness. There cannot be any dogma or any boundary or limit. You can raise any question even if the question is wrong then it is the duty of the person uh, to clarify the you know flaw and inconsistency uh, in the question the third thing for something to be philosophy is uh, the most important thing is the argument philosophical discussion is argumentative analysis and we can say that philosophical method is the method of giving argument which you can call as reason so the big issue, meaning the fundamental issue, free discussion, full uh, reasoning, you can say. And the third thing is the argument. You can, you should put your argument in favor of your position, whatever you say. Then it will count as philosophy. So philosophy uh, is not a traditional uh, discipline. Uh, it's uh, something extraordinary. It is always philosophy of something um, it deals all the subjects but in its own way so to uh, define philosophy uh, like we see to our students say darshan hoche jivano jagater bepar how philosophy could be something uh, life and the world <coughs> um, uh, as a definition of philosophy because we know every discipline and every uh, knowledge you know field is dealt with uh, life and the world so there must be a significancy and a specificity of philosophy that makes it distinct from literature say or history or chemistry or biology or physics <clears throat> philosophy as we uh, teach in our department uh, i can summarize uh, it in three uh, groups the core uh, of philosophy um, the branches of philosophy and Eastern philosophy. In the core of philosophy, we firstly um, introduce students with the problems of philosophy that we call 
uh, the introductory philosophy then we introduce the students with the history of philosophy starting from Greek period to the, um, to the you know uh, last uh, and then uh, we actually teach them metaphysics the topics of metaphysics uh, and then epistemology and then axiology what is metaphysics metaphysics is the source for reality when there is a question of reality or being that is metaphysics metaphysics is comprised with two things ontology and cosmology ontology is the inner characteristics of everything uh, and cosmology is the study to find out the reason or um, why the world has become in this way rather than becoming other way or not at all uh, it, epistemology is the study of knowledge the source what are the sources of knowledge and basically we define uh, experience that is called empiricism and then reason that is called rationalism as the major candidates of the sources of knowledge there are, could be uh, other sources as well in epistemology there is another discussion about the justification of, of knowledge how can we justify or verify or confirm that some claim uh, would count as knowledge or what will be the epistemic status of any uh, proposition um, the third thing uh, in uh, philosophy the among the core is the axiology axiology um, is meant for uh, logic ethics and um, aesthetics well in logic um, uh, we deal with the good reasoning and the loss of thought uh, in Aristotelian logic, there are deductive process and inductive process. Now there are several branches of logic, including um, uh, you know informal logic, um, uh, you know mathematical logic, uh, symbolic logic. Um, there are so many branches of logical studies in philosophy. Uh, there is a popular misunderstanding uh, that logic is philosophy. Actually, logic is a tool of philosophy. Uh, logic is a core of philosophy but logic is not all of philosophy instead logic itself is dependent on philosophy and we have our course in our fourth year undergrad uh, philosophy of logic you see uh, and then the fourth most important branch of philosophy in the core is ethics ethics means and the study of values uh, when we say we ought to do we should do then it in, in, involves us in ethics uh, what will be right for us to do, what will be wrong for us to refrain ourselves, uh, what could be the criteria, uh, how can we get it, all these things are ethics. Ethics has, you know, three parts, uh, the normative ethics, uh, the traditional ethics you can call it, the meta-ethics, that is the uh, metaphysical aspect of ethical concepts. Suppose, what does it mean good? What is justice? This is meta-ethics and then recently the most popular part of ethics is practical ethics uh, including business ethics, uh, environmental ethics, uh, medical ethics uh, and so on. Uh, in our courses, curriculum and courses, we actually deal with another kind of uh, philosophy courses uh, which are, you know, entitled such as philosophy of philosophy of mathematics, philosophy of economics, philosophy of physics, philosophy of history, philosophy of literature. There could be uh, so many branches of uh, philosophy which uh, starts with the title that philosophy of that. Um, in, in the third level, we actually uh, offer courses which I can summarize as Eastern philosophy comprising Muslim philosophy uh, and Indian philosophy as the major and include, uh, we also include uh, philosophy in Bangladesh and uh, a paper we recently introduced as a Far Eastern philosophy uh, including uh, Japanese philosophy and Chinese philosophy. Uh, among the history of philosophy we see that philosophy has been started in the ancient Greek uh, with the very question what is the ultimate staff of reality. Um, uh, that these questions, the big, these big questions uh, were in the past but it was answered with the help of religion, scripture and mythology but when people attempted to answer the questions by applying their reason that has uh, initiated the start of western philosophy that we know uh, nowadays. Uh, the prominent Greek philosophers you, we know 
is Socrates and his student Plato and his student as Aristotle. Uh, all three, they were atheists and believers in God, though in Greek philosophy we see a uh, noticeable uh, presence of atheism. Philosophy doesn't mean for atheism or theism. Philosophy is analytic. It, it doesn't uh, describe or, uh, you know, prescribe something. Instead, it, it uh, you know, um, critically looks after things and finds the arguments for any position and the possible arguments against that position. And as human being and cognitive agents, we have to find our own way. The philosophy courses that we deal with actually uh, uh, Western philosophy as I said earlier and Western philosophy has some very good merits and you know positive aspects including the openness of philosophy. You, we know philosophy must be free and open there cannot be any boundary or dogma. Um, Western philosophy at least nowadays we see that it is comparatively uh, free and open and the discussion is really philosophical. The argument uh, that are given in Western philosophy has intellectual basis and they are in depth and they cover uh, all the possible areas of human inter interest and enterprise. The problem with Western tradition is that they are obsessed with dichotomy. Mm, they are um, they are, what should I say, extreme. Um, they focus either uh, empiricism uh, will be the source of knowledge or rationalism. Uh, they engage themselves in whether realism is true or, or idealism is true. Uh, so this is a problem in their philosophy and you know every knowledge has some cultural uh, uh, and you know historical um, influences on them uh, as we see in Western philosophy some trends are dominant but they include the other trends that is not dominant in the Western uh, practical social life. This is their uh, merit. Uh, the Eastern philosophy namely Indian philosophy and Muslim philosophy they have their merits and good aspects that they uh, th these traditions are you know uh, um, they are uh, in comprehensive you can say and they focus on integration rather than you know binary um, they see things hierarchically uh, and it's better for them but the demerit and the problem with Eastern philosophy Muslim philosophy and Indian philosophy is that uh, these trends uh, actually have lack in their freeness of philosophical discussions they are loaded and burdened with the scriptural uh, references um, Indian philosophy and Muslim philosophy is mostly um, descriptive and prescriptive um, and contemplative basically uh, these traditions doesn't include all the areas of philosophy uh, they actually focus on some areas of uh, their interest uh, I can say that Muslim philosophy nowadays for last couple of centuries is focused on uh, political ideals uh, we can say that political philosophy but the mainstream philosophy metaphysics epistemology uh, logic um, ethics and you know aesthetics is not seriously discussed in uh, Muslim philosophy uh, I can say at least last uh, hundred years well um, what is the utility of philosophical studies mm -hmm. You can study philosophy, but there is no job waiting for you. Then why do you study philosophy? Um, I can say that there are some specialized jobs uh, that the specialized persons can do the job. Suppose no one could be a doctor without studying the medicine. Someone cannot be an engineer without studying the, uh, you know, engineering faculty. But uh, philosophy, as a philosophy student, anyone can get any job that is free for, for all disciplines. And philosophy will enlighten you in your analytic power, in your critical thinking. Uh, if you want to live an ethical life, you have to come to philosophy, uh, you know or not, uh, I mean you are conscious or not. If you are an ethical person, then you are a philosopher that because you have chosen some way to live uh, uh, in your life. So, 
uh, if we want to uh, get a society which is knowledge based society which is pluralistic in its nature which is tolerant we have to come back to philosophy because we the philosophers we know that every position has some merit and argument as well as has some demerit and problems so at the end of the day we have to go for one way we cannot be uh, neutral uh, seriously neutral absolutely neutral in this practical life we have to identify ourselves with the position when we identify ourselves with the position that means we take a position we actually nullify and cancel all other positions the actually people uh, other than philosophy when they engage uh, in you know choosing uh, ethics in their life uh, you know ideology in their life or um, some good preferences they think that their part is the only true and good part uh, and they have only logic and reason others don't have all these things but in philosophy we know that every position have its own uh, merits and you know arguments but um, as a person as a human being as i cannot have a neutral position i make a choice and when i make a choice uh, i take my position as the right position but i know that others position also uh, have some uh, you know points and that are worthy enough uh, to be taken from their own perspective so the philosophy people um, they could be really tolerant and inclusive in their social uh, and political life as we see it. Uh, the contribution of philosophy um, uh, is that philosophy uh, has made some apps to men we can say philosophy um, uh, has you know initiated and philosophy has you know pushed from the back uh, to develop civilization. So human civilization is the contribution of philosophy. Why do scientists do science? Uh, uh, we know scientists, uh, you know, perform their scientific uh, investigations in their own distinctive way. But why do they uh, do science? Why they engage in scientific, you know, uh, discoveries? Not that they will patent uh, their discoveries and they'll be rich person. We know that they feel something from their within, some, you know, irresistible, uh, temptation to uh, uh, to explore, to go beyond, to examine what things out there. So we say that philosophy is the cause uh, that scientists are engaged in their science, and uh, we know that science has given us the tremendous fruit, the technology. Uh, for every discipline, philosophy is the lifeline and foundation, and philosophy is there, no matter we are aware of it or not. Uh, in some situations when we, uh, we fail to take decision, philosophy offers us uh, with alternatives and way out. You know that uh, we cannot uh, have certain knowledge uh, uh, in uh, usual disciplines except in philosophy. Philosophically, you can determine something uh, with 100% surety if you apply the logic uh, or the way of philosophy. Uh, we know that uh, we can say about time travel. Um, time travel is not possible uh, if we uh, are mean to go in the past and to make a change in the past. But if time travel is meant to go in the past as we roll back our memory, then it could be possible. Uh, for philosophical uh, knowledge, you see that there is certainty, and there, if there, when in those areas where there is no certainty, uh, philosophy bothers people uh, that they can take their own decision because philosophy consider human being as capable enough to find his or her own decision and own, you know, right uh, and good. Lastly, the urgent uh, uh, things, the reforms that is uh, a must for our um, philosophical discipline specifically in Bangladesh I can point out three points uh, we should decrease the number of the students uh, we um, keep admission 150 students in the first year uh, beyond our course but it should not be uh, exceeding 50 number of students 30 40 is good enough maximum 50 there can should not be 
100 plus students because it is impossible to deal with 100 people with philosophical analysis. The second is that the classroom facilities uh, should be very much, uh, you know, okay. Uh, it is actually applicable for all other disciplines, but in all the all other disciplines, there are some matters that we um, those people can depend on and can take uh, you know help from. But in philosophical discussions, we are uh, left alone with our brain activities, with our you know focus and concentration. So classroom facilities is a must for philosophy. And the third thing in this point is that in the exam system, we take a year-ending exam, um, four hours, ten questions, uh, students are expected to answer five questions, which so 20 marks. This is very bad. Uh, this uh, kind of sitting exam and the, and the year-ending exam must be changed. Instead, students uh, should, uh, you know, get their credit by their presentations, by their write-ups, by their uh, questioning, by their presence and by their overall activities. The second thing uh, that we should do on urgent basis is that uh, we should introduce philosophy courses in our primary and secondary level. Uh, we know students um, uh, have their uh, textbooks on geography on you know science on physics on mathematics on language but they don't have any course on philosophy what is the problem we are facing the consequences in our national life that we have the identity crisis and we have intolerance the level that we see right now so uh, in the primary and the secondary level uh, there should be philosophy courses for the students uh, which will be such that they will be introduced with the problem, they will engage themselves in the problem and they will be thoughtful, creative and imaginative uh, in, their, in these basic aspects that are dealt in philosophy. If they can, uh, you know, uh, deal with science, if they can have courses on mathematics, why not philosophy? The complicacy is not matter. The students should be uh, you know, offered the courses and the text and curriculums in a very lucid way uh, and we, the professional philosophers, should do it immediately. The third thing uh, and the last thing in my suggestion is that uh, the curriculum in our university should be such that any student from any discipline uh, should be allowed to take a concerned philosophy course and he or she will get credit from the course. Uh, and this will make uh, philosophy popular and worthy enough and the misunderstanding about philosophy will be over. Thank you very much.